a queen, a crown princess, a president, a prime minister, a Chinese e-commerce pioneer and a player often ranked as the world's best footballer among eminent advocates appointed by the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon to help achieve the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which seeks to eliminate poverty, hunger, and a raft of social ills all within 15 years. The eminent Sustainable Development Goals advocates will build on their unique standing and leadership to promote the SDGs as part of an ambitious and transformative global development agenda. I urge partners across the world to embrace the ambition embodied in the new sets of goals. I look forward to working together to deliver on the unfinished MDG commitments, uh, tackle inequality, and uh, meet, um, meet the new challenges that have emerged across the three dimensions of sustainable development, economic, social, and environmental. The MDGs achieved significant progress over the past 15 years, but persistent gaps in official development assistance and insufficient access to markets, affordable medicines and new technologies have highlighted the need for a rejuvenation of the global partnership for development. Transition from the MDGs to the SDGs presents an opportunity to unlock resources for investment in education, health, equitable growth and sustainable production and consumption. Recognizing the success of the MDGs, countries agreed in the future we want the outcome document of the UN Conference on Sustainable Development, also known as Rio Plus 20 in 2012, to establish an open working group to develop a set of sustainable development goals for consideration and appropriate action. I think for the first time we're not putting a band-aid on the problem, we're looking at the root causes and unless we make the investments to look at those root causes, we are going to continue to have the conflicts escalate, we're going to continue to see the damage in the environment and more and more people are going to be excluded. Inequality is going to be a mainstay which is just not sustainable. Um, and I think so. I think it is time, and I think uh, the sustainable development agenda has come off its time. And, and this is where I, you know member states are very serious about the process and what they want to get out of it. The sustainable development goals proposed by the Open Working Group are the result of a three-year-long transparent participatory process, inclusive of all stakeholders and people's voices. Many stakeholders, especially youth, were also involved from the beginning on the social media and other platforms. We're now the very first generation in human history that can see the end of extreme poverty. We must not turn away from this challenge. We must seize the moment and use all of our knowledge and grit to reach these new goals. Supporters say the SDGs go much further by addressing root causes of issues such as poverty and looking at means as well as ends. They also are intended to be universal, not just for the developing world. Improving girls' education, removing barriers to women's employment and access to finance would not only boost growth, but also tackle income inequality and poverty. Because let's not forget, poverty and exclusion are sexist. Supporters say they have to task that lies beyond the three-day SDG summit is implementing the 17 goals and their 169 accompanying targets into programs, policies and parliaments in member nations. Such implementation requiring trillions of dollars in investment will be monitored and reviewed using a set of global indicators to be agreed by March 2016. The World Bank and the IMF have launched a joint initiative to strengthen tax systems in developing countries. Our aim is to assist lower income countries to increase their tax collection by at least 2 to 4 percent of GDP. We are also expanding our support for developing countries in several ways. One, poorest countries can now borrow 50 percent more from our interest-free facility. Second, we are strengthening our technical support to help countries boost domestic revenue mobilization to finance development spending. We're doing that together with the bank. Three, 
We are in, in, intensifying our support for fragile and conflict-affected affected states. And importantly, we are maintaining for the longer term the zero interest rate on our rapid credit facility loans. The Global Indicator Framework to be developed by the Interagency and Expert Group on SDG Indicators will be agreed on by the UN Statistical Commission by March 2016 the moment in history where we are learning the lessons of the Millennium Development Goals and what we need to do to address um, existing challenges but new complexities um, in a universal agenda. Uh, and for, for us, 193 countries coming together to express what it is that we need to do to address that, um, uh, amongst other things, not just the Sustainable Development Goals, but with the, the means of implementation and addressing the climate change. So three big actions, and this, I think, is at the core of it. It is about a universal agenda that is integrated. Government will also develop their own national indicators to assist in monitoring progress made on the goals and targets. <laughs>